What fulfills you is what will grow you. I'm not my influencer, man. Most of the time, as long as you ain't faking around, you ain't living a life that ain't yours. <laughs> Which DMs annoy influencers the most? Hello honeys, it's y'alls and welcome back to my channel. Today I am super super excited. We have not done a Q&A in a while. And this time we are answering questions you are too scared to ask influencers. These are questions you are too scared to ask your face because you're like, what's on pop? But I'm here to help you out, okay? Hey there. <laughs> It's y'all's channel. Some of these questions are a bit savage. I asked you guys on Instagram and as per usual, y'all came through. I literally asked you guys five minutes ago, maybe 10. Do companies pay for unboxings? Do you apply to get gifts from different companies? Good question. Um, they don't always pay for unboxings. Most of the time if I do an unboxing and I do it as in back to back where you see a whole lot of unboxings, most of those are packages that I receive. I literally make a choice. Do I want to post this? Yes, no, if I'm not paid. Especially if I know there's a paid campaign. I'm literally not likely to do it at that time. I might unbox much later. Especially if I've used the product maybe once or twice and I just want to show you guys. I do sometimes actually film unboxings before I actually uh, post them so like weeks before and then I use the product if I like it I'll post that unboxing and make it look like it's real time when it's not really in real time you know um, but yes there are other companies when a campaign starts usually they pay us for the unboxing posts which is great but I'd say most of the time when a campaign comes out it includes the fee for that unboxing and then for the most part obviously when a campaign comes out the company does send out PR drops to a whole lot of influencers and it's at their prerogative to post it's not really paid thing although there is this one campaign this one brand that expects you to post they will send you that link <laughs> and they will check if you post it even if they don't pay you so me I'm very strict when it comes to that if I love the product Oh, I think the box is really cool and I want to share it with my followers. Great. And then the second question is, do you apply to get gifts from different companies? You can reach out to companies, especially if you've like, for instance, know an email. Maybe you've got an email address here, Revlon. You can actually email them and say, hey, I'm an influencer. I'd love to try out your product. And or can I actually be part of your PR list? And they can actually add you to the pre PR list, which is where they've basically got this list of contacts on their database of influencers and they are the influencers they send to they don't always send everyone if they've got a hundred they might target only 50 yeah but that's how you get yourself on the list most of the time obviously once you've grown your following they do email you and ask if they could add you to their pr list what are the perks of being an influencer i don't think the money is a perk because if you are working for a corporation if you're working for yourself and you're getting paid that's remuneration for the work that you are doing you know it's compensation for an exchange of work so i don't think there's a perk to being paid you've worked for it it's your money you deserve it um but yeah I think getting free things, getting access, for me it's growing a network. Honestly, that's my biggest. It's growing a network, you know. And even at times when it's really tough, it's a network that I can utilize and leverage on. Um, if I've, I'm hosting an event and I need sponsors, these are the people who are usually, you know, very, very keen and able to assist me um, with products worth 10K, 12K, 5K. Um, and they usually come to the fore whenever I'm like, okay, cool, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing a giveaway or like Cadbury, for instance, I was doing the Nurturers box. Outside of my influencing stuff, my y'all's beauty business has benefited from relationships that y'all's channel has with other brands. What kind of CV do you need? How to be brave? It's not a CV, is it? It's a portfolio. Your rate card, your media kit has got a bit of your portfolio. Who have you worked with? What work have you done? Um, what things have you created? Have something that's there that's, in our case, it's all digital, right? So for me, I refer my clients to my YouTube channel. If I want to work with a specific brand and I have done content similar to what I want to create for them, I send them a link to a similar video. Um, that's, I suppose, is your CV, you know, and it's your door in. And most of the time, like I say, once you've established yourself, you do get a yes once you haven't i have made this example even before i uh, got my first invite to the clicks curls event i emailed them and i said i've got a channel and it does talk about hair i had i hadn't done any sponsored content at the time but i was focused on hair so i was relevant and i just asked if i could come to the event and they were kind enough 
to give me a free ticket when they were selling these tickets only because I was obviously an influencer and the assumption was I was gonna post and say I'm there so I'm gonna spread the word and it becomes mutually beneficial in that way how to be brave you don't need to be brave when you're talking to the camera I'm, I'm not alone actually I've got a friend sitting right here <laughs> but usually I've got a camera right in front of me in my room in this case in my lounge and I'm comfortable here I don't need to be brave I don't need to there's no nerves you know I hope that makes sense if you're doing something that you love and you're comfortable in and you're talking about a subject that you know of you actually don't need to be nervous at least like gang hack. do brands pay you sustainably do you know what I have been doing this full-time since 2018 April so what's that 2019 2020 2021 it's three years this is the shakiest year I've had this is the year I could safely say it's not it's not very sustainable if people don't pay you on time <laughs> it's not that the jobs are not there the jobs can come but this is the first time that i've experienced you know brands having delays with campaigns not knowing what's going on with payments delaying invoice payments and it's just yeah it's just been a drag but for the most part it is pretty sustainable especially once you've anchored yourself into a certain niche which i did myself a favor initially by setting myself in the natural hair space and then spreading my wings most people start the opposite they start with everything and then they niche down for me i started niching down and now i'm spreading my wings and talking about things i'm really passionate about i was passionate about natural hair but it was a journey that i was sharing that i was going through at the moment i'm like i don't <clears throat> I share content that I really, really want. And if brands align with what I'm talking about, it's a collab. Um, how much do influencers make? There's a range of prices that you can have. I think the basic rule on Instagram, I think once you've reached maybe over 70,000 followers, you can use the 10% rule. I've heard a lot of influencers charging that way. I've never actually stuck to that rule. I've always gone a little bit above 10%. So as in for images, an IG image, if I've got 70,000 followers, I should be charging 7,000. If I've got 100,000 followers, I should be charging 10,000 rand. And obviously, the more you grow, when you get to half a million, I don't know if somebody's gonna pay 50,000 rand. However, if you've got a million followers or two million followers, of course, I think there are brands out there who will pay you 50,000 rand for an image if you have influence, okay? So again, it's, it's, it differs campaign per campaign, but for me, I've managed to get a little bit more than 10%. And then obviously for my videos on YouTube, ha i charge at least three times that amount because videos are work i am the director and sometimes i do have a cameraman and sometimes i pay an editor so i have to incorporate all of those costs in there when i price my final youtube video can it get overwhelming absolutely i think this is one of the spaces where we don't respect even tina ourselves we don't respect mental health we don't prioritize it a lot of people in our community as influencers wake up and this is the first thing they go to it's the first thing that they look at and you can only imagine if you have to wake up and respond that's not healthy when are you feeding yourself when are, i mean you went to bed already responding that is why also the question of do you answer all your dms i don't i can't keep up it's it's impossible and it drains you because people don't only just ask questions they also ask for things there are people who are constantly asking of you and from you and you are constantly giving 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 and at some point you do need to refuel which is a chance that we don't often get okay we, a lot of us don't some people say is it expensive to keep up with the image if you are keeping up an image yes of course it will be expensive for you but for me for instance i'm not a fashion uh blogger i think it would be expensive if that's your niche uh, and I understand in fashion it's really really hard to get high paying campaigns so a lot of the things that people do are self-funded um, there are other things like if you are a tech um, influencer and you're starting out you have to buy a lot of these things however once you grow and you start getting a lot of these free things that you share about it doesn't become as expensive for me personally it hasn't been an expensive hobby i don't buy new clothes even though my accountants say any clothes i buy i need to actually claim from size because i'm spending for my business however i don't um i try and really keep it minimal costs okay the only costs i do respect and i pay videographers photographers editors anyone that i use behind the camera we have to respect their craft and a lot of the times we pay them up front before we get paid for those campaigns so that's really really tough that is expensive and it is part of the job how much money do you consistently get on youtube ah guys then boozy salary man you cannot how much money do you consistently get from your job mm? at what 
number of insta followers can you approach brands again my story is different brands started approaching me when i had less than a thousand followers on both instagram and here I had about 850 subscribers and i had less than 700 or about 700 followers on ig when i started working with my first brand campaign it's only because i was creating videos that were useful for the natural hair community if you are creating something that is useful that's helpful that's educational you mustn't forget that this youtube platform is one of the the biggest search engines in the world it's where people go when they need help so if you are serving you are more likely to actually find jobs within the space um, easier especially if you are serving a specific niche or a specific need um, that most brands household brands are selling in a sense if you walk into this game and you see brands that you can easily work with and you're creating content that's aligned with that you are most likely to get paid much earlier, my babes. You can't live without your toiletries. You can't live without your shampoo, your conditioner. You know, so you really have to also think about those things. Even though I'll be honest, I wasn't thinking about those things when I started. <laughs> Why do you share a hundred stories of reshares? Here's the thing. If you are going to share something, then you took the time out to share my content or to congratulate me or to just post and say something nice about me wouldn't you like me to reshare that so it might be a hundred people that have just said thank you y'all for posting this for me it's the appreciation of each and every individual it's human in, in other words i'm just saying it's something special and especially enough because you posted about me now i'm making you feel special by reposting i know it's annoying for the the person that's like scrolling through yo i'm a reshare as a manga but think about the person that just received that reshare do you all be genuine friends or is it just for content i think that's both there's there's a balance there are friends that you have that you know it's great collaboration buddies and you both agree to collaborate that once off i mean i did my my series influenced by most most of the people I featured are not like close friends. I might have their numbers. Um, some of them are acquaintances, but uh, that's how it is. It's a mutual agreement. We're just gonna create content, cool content together. And then there are others who you collab with, and you're just like, geez, you really dope. Let's be friends, and you both agree to be friends, you know. And then there are other people who you meet even before the content creation, and you become friends. Like Ukopano, um, I've made this example over the years. We've just became really good friends, and we ran into each other while she was vlogging in Rosebank when I used to work for corporate there. Does a slow growth affect or demotivate you? Depends on your goals. For me, at the moment, my socials are really stagnant. It doesn't really demotivate me because my current goal is to really align myself with who i am i've been going through a lot it's been a really tough year um and i just want to do what feels authentic to me so if that doesn't speak to people right now and it stays at one level meaning that the new followers i get balance out those who will leave because we get unfollows all the time and it stays at exactly the same amount for the next two three months i'm okay with that okay i'm evolving i'm changing however if I keep putting out content, specific content, and I'm not growing, yeah, definitely I'd be demotivated. But most of the time when I'm demotivated, it allows me to just self-evaluate, go back and get out of the box. When we're in that box, we are unable to see what's happening around us. So you want to always have that 360 view, that multi-dimensional view of what's really going on when, when you're on top of the box and on the side. And you can see everything and self-evaluate, take what's not working off, and then um, look at what is working, see what people are saying, read people's comments, understand people's comments that they might not be coming from a bad place. Maybe I should actually go towards this. People don't like the content that I'm doing, but there's that one video that I did. I didn't even like it, but people really love this. Um, maybe I should look at something in the middle, you know? So always self-evaluate. It's not really about just demotivating. And sometimes I feel like people get motivated from other people's uh, praises don't look for that what fulfills you is what will grow you do you have to filter yourself um, out of the fear of burning bridges i think to a large extent at times yes for me i really have to ask myself what does yours really feel like if i can't put a brand on blast which i try and avoid all the time i put it down on email i did not like this this and that actually this is disrespectful i say this in love i would love to work with you in future however if this continues me and you we are done yeah bo. so i do do that there are also brands that i have entered into contracts with 
<laughs> and then I realized I'll have to filter myself here. I will have to literally say the opposite of what I have said on my videos. But there's records, y'all. And besides that, in your own house, your husband will call you out if you do this. And I've had to turn down, the biggest deal that I've had to turn down was a 40,000 Rand deal. After I signed the contract, and then I realized when the products arrived, this is not me. This is the opposite of what I believe. <laughs> well, how, who am I going to be selling this to? Filtering myself, not always. Most of the time, I keep it real. Is it all about the numbers? You know what? Popularity is great, but engagement, engagement. If you have 500 followers and more than 10% of those people are engaging with your content, honey, honey, you are doing well. If more than 20%, even better. There are people out there with less than 6% of an engagement. In fact, an average of 6% sometimes is, is viewed by some brands as, oh, you know, it's, it's standard. It's not, babes. For me, it's not for my own standard. So it's not always about numbers. Again, I gave you guys the example. I started really small, um, but it was impact. It is about more impact and engagement. Is creating content still fun? Not always, no. I think you, you can lose yourself. And you can confuse influencing with creating content because you're creating for brands you're not creating for yourself anymore most of us started here having a lot of fun doing things for free and i've just started you know going back to tiktok at y'all's channel on tiktok and creating content not because it's going to be paid for anytime soon i have less than 500 uh, followers there right now um but i had 355 uh just Four, five days ago five days ago i had 355 followers and now i've got 468 followers listen to these numbers they're really really small but i've just grown do you understand to me i'm like oh my gosh i'm already growing on, <laughs> on tiktok five days later and i have more than 100 new followers like that is amazing because i'm actually doing something that's really fun it's it's something i consume and if i can produce what i enjoy consuming Ah, there's just something about that. It's another level of fulfillment. Okay, so to answer this question, it's not that fun anymore just because it's gotten. Once money gets involved, you must be very careful and wise about it. Do influencers still have hobbies? That's the thing. That's why it's not fun anymore. What started as a hobby is become a job and then it becomes tedious, then it becomes boring, then you reach a creator's block, then you wonder why you are bored and then the money doesn't come in, then you become depressed and I, I mean the word to itself, depressed because people's words are coming at you um, because things are just not fun anymore. Uh, brands might also be cancelling you, there's cancel culture, there's so many things, there's cyber bullies you lose your hobby right there um other than that the things i used to do before before covid i still consider as hobbies so yeah i still have some hobbies there but to be quite honest youtube which started off as a hobby has become less of one which is really really sad which dms annoy influences the most <sighs> the ones where we have to repeat every single thing we've just posted right there where did you buy that i've just tagged the brand <laughs> What do, you, what do you mean? <laughs> um, oh, y'all, I want to know about influencing. I mean, this is what I talk about on my channel. You might not know because you might be a new follower. I completely understand. But if you're somebody who's been following me for a while and I can see a DM thread, you've seen my post where I'm linking you to videos. I'm not going to answer that, you know. And then DMs which really make you feel crap, of course. Like where people come out of nowhere. The other day I dressed Fezzy up. DMs about about family, that, that I don't like it. I dressed Fezzy up in a Mickey Mouse um, tracksuit and top and it's like a brownish thing. But it had a filter on so it looked more orangey. And this person is like, you're dressing your child like he's in prison. Why would you do that? Now he looks like a prisoner. I'm just like, girl this ain't even worth um, Yazin. things that brands do that you absolutely hate so right now i've just been really really annoyed by the delays um there's times where agencies can't do much and i don't actually blame the brands i blame the agencies for not really having the the influencers best interest at heart sometimes you can actually tell that they're standing more for the brand obviously because that's where the money is coming from but there's just not a, a a good balance you i do feel like a puppet to a large extent especially this year um and there's been campaigns that have been dragging from last year which I signed a contract last year which was supposed to last eight weeks am i am i exclusive now because this contract is still going on which means i can't actually work with a conflicting brand yeah well and they're not going to compensate you extra for that and then they take time to pay you oh, that annoys me 
bad. I don't want to be that influencer that's complaining. So yeah, that is it. I really hope you did enjoy this video. It was longer than I expected. However, I really, really enjoyed being honest about, you know, things you might be too scared to ask influencers. I love you guys so, so much. Bye!